Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex and my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. And today we want to discuss Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ojolari. Are they going to be playing against the Dallas Cowboys on Monday night football? Um, a couple of things we want to discuss regarding stopping the Dallas Cowboys, three keys specifically. Uh, but I know everyone's kind of like anxious to hear is Thibodeau or and or Ojolari, either or, going to suit up against Dallas. I mean, obviously, Jihad Ward and Ocean Eximinus have really stepped up in their absence and played exceptionally well. Uh, for the expectations we had, Exhibit is, you know, we thought it was on a, on the fringe of the roster a couple of weeks ago, and he's had five total pressures in two games, including a sack and two quarterback curries last week um, against the Carolina Panthers. And Ward has just been tremendous stopping the run. He's done a, just a great job uh, limiting Derrick Henry. And aside from that 49-yard rush from CMC, he was otherwise locked down. So I was very impressed. I, I still am. I still think they're going to play a big part, especially if only one of those pass rushers <clears throat> in Ojolari or Thibodeau can actually feature. So I think the Giants are going to be a little bit cautious and, you know, ease them in. I don't think they're going to like throw them into the fire and just like expect them to be 100%. I think they'll probably give them some snaps, make sure they're healthy, make sure they feel good, and, you know, just kind of use the, utilize them that way and, and, and continue to rely on some of their better um, players right now who have, who have a couple of uh, games worth of experience. But, Anthony, before we dive into an injury update, some reports um, and the three keys to stop the Dallas Cowboys, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to hopefully see Kayvon Thibodeau make his NFL debut on Monday night. I think that would be excellent. I think it's exactly what the Giants need. I was looking at some stats earlier today, and I know that the Giants are getting the job done defensively because they're stopping the run so well. However, they are lacking some quarterback pressures. Now they're getting a little bit of a boost from Oshin Zimenez. As you just mentioned, Alex, he's playing pretty well. Jihad Ward is playing great in run defense. So I do want him to be on the field quite frequently, even if Ojolari and Thibodeau are still out there. I like Ward out there just to be a run-stopping enforcer to set that hard edge. But we do need a boost in the pass rushing productivity category. And I think that Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari, once they're both healthy, they will be that boost, provide that spark, and get after the quarterback in a way that no one else has been able to thus far. So I can't wait for KT to make his debut. I'm hoping that it's on Monday night against a division rival. That would be perfect. The best way for him to really just enter the NFL, make his presence known, is on a primetime home game against a division rival. I think that would be perfect. A great storyline going into the game. So really hoping to see number five out there. And I can't wait for him and Aziz Olari to be back on the field. Absolutely. I mean, look, right now, the expectation is that Kayvon Thibodeau will play on Monday. He practiced yesterday. He practiced today. I just posted a clip on Twitter. I think Jordan Ron on ESPN posted it um, on his just a video of, of Kayvon Thibodeau going up against Evan Neal. He looks like he's ready. He's running at full speed again. Um, and getting some team practice sessions in is definitely a good sign for um, his chances and probability of playing against Dallas. And, and that's a freaking awesome way to get introduced to the NFL, by the way. I know he's been waiting patiently for his opportunity, but you know, starting his NFL career against Dallas Monday night whiteout is absolutely um, insane. Like that's uh, everyone's going to be going nuts. I'm so excited to see the energy of that game. It's going to be so much fun. Um, but you know, with Ojulari, you know, I think that they're probably taking these a little bit more cautious with him. I don't think that there's been as much reporting on how he's doing. Um, he said recently that he feels good. He's staying on course for what the trainers wanted him to do. Uh, they'll go out and give it all he's got. It can go to a different level in this scheme. So he's actually saying like, he actually might be able to unlock a couple of, um, you know, things that maybe he wasn't able to do with Patrick Graham with Wink Martindale. You know, this system is interesting. Sometimes they drop those outside linebackers into coverage. But the thing is, like, when you're rushing so many blitzers, when you're sending just more guys than they can block, those 1v1 battles become a lot more frequent. You know, we saw last week they sent linebackers, they sent safeties, McKinney, whoever it might be. When you're overwhelming with blitzers, like, you you leave your star edge rushers, Thibodeau or, or Jolari, on, with 1v1 battles instead of having to get through double teams or get through tight ends and, and you know, offensive linemen. It's, you know, a lot easier for them to win those 1v1 battles and, and boost their stats in that way. So I think the uh, Ojolari is kind of onto something when he says that, you know, this scheme really opens up a lot of things for him and he thinks he can really capitalize on it. Um, so I am very excited to, to see if they can, if they can really uh, extrapolate on those skills and those strengths um, that they are just God-given gifts. But, you know, let's talk about a couple keys here for stopping Dallas, right? This is easier said than done, but last week the Bengals really just beat themselves. The Bengals have looked really bad. Their offensive line is terrible. Joe Burrow, you know, definitely has his fair share of issues right now. I'm um, trying to get the, you know, you kind of look at Daniel Jones. Like Daniel Jones has been going through whatever the hell Joe Burrow is going through right now for like four years. Um, are they on the same level of talent? Not even close, but you can see what a bad offensive line does for you. It puts your quarterback in disarray. Um, any, any quarterback would have that same situation. Um, unless you're like Lamar, you can just kind of use your legs to supplement it. But 
I'll tell you what, you know, Cooper Rush looked better than Dak Prescott in week two. <laughs> and Cooper Rush is not very good. I think that if the Giants pass rush comes to play and <clears throat> with Wink Martindale, we know they will. The number one key for me is just force Cooper Rush to beat the Giants. Don't let Tony Pollard or Ezekiel Elliott beat you on the ground. Force Cooper Rush to throw the football. Force him to be the guy that has to throw under pressure and actually get the ball out of his hands and accurately on the move um, and trying to avoid just the monstrous amounts of blitzers that the Giants are going to send his way. Um, so, you know, what do you think about that? Do you think that, you know, Cooper Rush obviously being a backup, making him beat you with his arm probably makes the most sense if you're the Giants defense? I mean, yeah, that's exactly how the Giants win this game. They force Cooper Rush to be the star. Cooper Rush is not a star. He is a backup quarterback. If Dak Prescott was in the game, the game plan is completely different defensively for the New York Giants, but he's not playing. So you have to take that into account, and you have to understand that the Cowboys are going to try and feed their playmakers. You're probably going to see a lot of screen passes to CeeDee Lamb, even to Ezekiel Elliott, a lot of handoffs. I, I expect Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard each to probably get – 10 to 15 handoffs a piece. So you're going to see probably a heavy rushing attack and a game plan centered around spreading the ball out to the playmakers. I don't think that the Cowboys want to put the game in Cooper Rush's hands. Again, he is a backup quarterback. Is he a decent backup quarterback? In my opinion, yes. I think he is pretty decent for a backup, but he is not a starting level quality player and the Giants need to take advantage of that. The Cowboys are without their star quarterback, and that is how they win, by taking the backup, dismantling him, disrupting him, pressuring him, all that kind of stuff, forcing him to make errors. That's how the Giants will win. Make Cooper Rush turn the ball over. Make Cooper Rush beat you, because Cooper Rush is not going to beat you unless you really just give it away to him. So for the New York Giants defense, that really is the key. It'll be very crucial to pressure Cooper Rush. That's why I'm really hoping Kayvon Thibodeau is able to get out there, because if Kayvon Thibodeau is able to apply some pressure to a backup quarterback in Cooper Rush, then we're going to be talking about maybe getting some interceptions for Adoree Jackson and the others, or maybe getting some sack fumbles, right? So I I think that really is the way that the Giants win this game. Now, offensively, there's plenty that they need to do there, get the job done. I know that they need to handle uh, Micah Parsons, make sure that he doesn't you know, terrorize the offensive line and Daniel Jones. But on the defensive side of the ball, when you're talking about winning this game for the New York Giants, if, if you're the Dallas Cowboys actually taking a look at the offense, I'm sure Cowboys fans are talking about feeding Zeke and letting him beat the Giants. They want Zeke to run all over the Giants, have a big game. He's kind of struggled in the first two weeks of the season. So maybe Cowboys fans are looking at it like, hey, division rival on the road. We need to control the clock. We need to be careful. Feed Zeke. Let him run all over the Giants. That's not what the Giants want to happen. So the way that you counteract that, you force them to put the ball into Cooper Rush's hands and force a backup quarterback to beat you. Yeah, you have to. I mean, look, the Giants, uh, look what they just did at Baker Mayfield. Look what they did to Ryan Tannehill. I mean, those are much better quarterbacks than Cooper Rush by most accounts. Uh, maybe not Baker anymore. But, you know, this is definitely an opportunity for the Giants to take advantage of a, a pretty spotty Dallas offensive line to start the season, honestly. They have not been very good. Um, you know, I definitely think that there there's liabilities there. Uh, so far, I think that they're ranking, well, they're ranking pretty well, uh, ninth in pass blocking. But, um, the individual grades aren't as aren't as good. I think they had their tackles have been kind of beat up a little bit, but you know, nonetheless, the Giants have a good opportunity to overwhelm them with just numbers essentially and stopping the run, like you mentioned, stopping Zeke, Tony Pollard, easier said than done. They kind of have this two headed monster there. They've been relying on a lot. Uh, Zeke is kind of washed. I think he has like two games with fifty yards, and Tony Pollard has a lot of yards on the in the receiving side. Um, but those are the guys are the ones you have to stop. Dalton Schultz, obviously, their tight end, obviously, is a pretty good player. Um, they always love to utilize those tight ends. They do a lot of really unique things. The Kellen Moore loves to do unique things at the tight end position um, and kind of like target that spot specifically. So those linebackers take Crowder. I, I'm very curious to see how the Giants uh, man up the, the tight end position, whether they use Julian Love again in that linebacker spot. And, you know, Wink Martindale said today, we've at, he's like, you guys have seen two different defenses entirely the first two weeks of the season, which I found to be pretty cool. They're changing their entire style every week to fit the matchup. They're not just like we're running out cover one and we're just attack, attack, attack. They're changing the positions of all these pieces. You know, you saw Julian Love play a lot of linebacker last week. You saw Xavier McKinney play a lot on the in the box, a lot on the defensive line. They're doing things to change their entire game plan. So if you're an offense and you're looking at what the Giants are doing on film defensively, you have no idea what the hell they're doing. Like they're you're like one week, they look entirely different than the next week. So the Giants are changing everything they're trying to do. Um, they can they can guess and be like, okay, maybe they're going to bring those linebackers, uh, those those big safeties into the box. 
um, and try to stop our tight ends, try to stop our running backs. I think that we're going to see a lot of that this week again. And I think that's kind of something we mentioned yesterday, talking about the three-headed monster at safety with Dane Belton, McKinney, and Love. Um, I think Dane Belton's going to get a lot more free safety snaps. I think that, you know, McKinney and Julian Love will probably be up into the box trying to stop Tony Pollard, Zeke out of the backfield, Dalton Schultz. Um, you know, what are your thought about, thoughts about that? Like, how do you think they kind of get those safeties incorporated? Um, do you think they'll run a lot more dime, and continue with the dime package to kind of mitigate the liabilities at linebacker? Yeah, kind of like we discussed in yesterday's episode, I think you're going to see a lot of dime packages from the New York Giants defense. I said that all week leading up to the Carolina game, and then we saw that come true on the field on that Sunday. So I think once again, you're probably going to see a lot of dime. You're going to see Julian Love, Xavier McKinney. They're, they're capable tacklers. They can get in the box and they can tackle running backs. They can make run stops. But Ezekiel Elliott is also a pretty capable receiver. So he can get out of the backfield and make some plays out in space. So you do need a safety with the coverage ability to keep Ezekiel Elliott in check. So I think you're going to see safeties in the box, which of course is going to feature those be featured in those dime packages. However, since Ezekiel Elliott is a great runner and the Cowboys game plan is likely going to rely heavily on Ezekiel Elliott, feeding him the ball and giving him carries up the middle, you are probably also going to need some linebacker depth. I think that's why the Giants signed Jalen Smith to their practice squad. I expect him to be elevated ahead of game time and I expect him to play probably a significant amount of the game because the Giants do need some extra linebackers out there to defend on the run. Now, as we mentioned, Jahal Ward has been great at setting the edge. Anytime the rush goes to the outside, we trust Ward to make the play. Even Kayvon Thibodeau made a couple nice plays and run defense setting the edge during the preseason. And I think that he's very capable as a player to set the edge in the running game. But taking a look at the Giants defense, a linebacker is the weakness. Maybe they go out there and they sign another veteran before next week's matchup. At this point, it's probably too late to go pick up Joe Schobert now and play him on Monday night. But I do think some more depth should be added to the Giants linebacker core. However, the way to counteract not having good linebackers is to play your great safeties in the box. So that's what the Giants are going to do, and that's what they have been doing. They have some really capable safeties who are very good in run defense and in coverage. Julian Love, Xavier McKinney, and the veteran uh, Tony Jefferson can also get in the box and get busy there. So you're going to see those safeties in those dime packages just play rather frequently in the box. And I think that is the best way to counteract, you know, having a deficit at the linebacker position. But like I said, it's probably going to be a run centric offensive plan from the Dallas Cowboys and the Giants. Number one key is to force Cooper Rush to beat you. The way you do that, you shut down Ezekiel Elliott, you stop the run that forces Cooper Rush to throw the ball. Those two keys go hand in hand. So the New York Giants number one priority has to be defending the run. Yeah, and, and the, the last key I want to discuss is kind of one that we talk about every single week. It's it's one of the biggest things for winning football games, and it's winning the turnover battle, right? Every week we talk about this. you got to win the turnover battle. The Giants last week took that to heart, and they went out and they forced two turnovers in the first two drives, right? The, the opening kickoff uh, forced a fumble. Dane Belton recovers it, and then uh, uh, Darnay Holmes strips, strips the ball out, um, and uh, I forget – who recovered it? I think Adoree Jackson recovered it. So uh, there's definitely a lot of awesome turnovers the Giants are kind of working with right now. They're they're focusing in and harping on getting that football on the defensive side. Um, now the offense just has to capitalize on those. I think that's like kind of goes hand in hand with the turnover battle. When the when the defense forces them, the, the Giants have to score touchdowns off of those. They cannot settle for field goals. Graham Goodall won like the, the special teams player of the week for the NFC this week. But I don't want to see him win the win the special teams player of the week because that means he's kicking too many damn field goals. I want to see him win it because he, he got a game winner, right? Game winning field goal. But if he's kicking three, four, five field goals a game, that means we're not scoring touchdowns, guys. I don't want to be the New York field goal giants. I want to be the New York scoring points touchdown giants. And, you know, we're winning games at the end of the day, but uh, I'd like to win games by 20, 30 points like, you know, the Bills do or the Chiefs do. I don't want to have to be like just squeezing by teams by one or two points that we should be blowing out because we're turning the ball over in their red zone and we have opportunities to score touchdowns. Like that's where the Giants need to be, um, you know, a little bit more proficient, a little bit more effective. And I think that that's kind of the final key is when they get those turnovers, got to score touchdowns, no more field goals, no more settling for that speed, get the ball in your playmaker's hands, let them go to work. Um, I'd love to see Kadarius Tony get more reps in the red zone, see what he can do in terms of making people miss. He doesn't get that many touches in the red zone. I don't really get it. I don't really understand why, but I'd love to see him get some more in the near future here um, with uh, you know the, the Dallas Cowboys coming to town on Monday night. But what are your thoughts on the turnover battle and kind of the, the entire concept of like scoring touchdowns versus settling for those field goals? 
Yeah, settling for field goals was my number one pet peeve in that win over the Carolina Panthers. I thought especially on that first drive, you know, opening kickoff, the Carolina Panthers fumbled the ball. Maybe the New York Giants just weren't ready to call. Maybe Mike Kafka was like, oh, man, I wasn't expecting to be calling plays on the first first drive. So maybe that screwed him up a little bit. I'm not sure. But I wasn't crazy about the call, play calls on that first drive. And I also really wasn't crazy about the fact that the Giants didn't turn a fumble on the opening kickoff into six points. Turning that into three points was a massive disappointment. And I felt that way a couple of times throughout the first two weeks of the season I feel like there's been moments where the Giants have gotten the ball in really great field position whether that be from you know a short punt with a good return or whether that be from forcing a turnover and they're settling for three points three points is points you know points is points I'll take the points but I want six seven maybe even eight points if Brian Dable wants to drop his balls again and go for two right so I think that the Giants need to be more creative with their play calling they need to be gutsier and I think when you're in those third and long situations Daniel Jones needs to rip the ball past the sticks he needs to stop settling for checkdowns underneath now I understand he wants to play conservatively that's part of winning the turnover battle and I think that was the Giants focus in week two uh he of course threw that terrible back shoulder fade to Saquon Barkley in week one that was an interception he also had the fumble so Daniel Jones with two two turnovers in week one but he did have zero in week two and I think that was probably the focus I think the Giants probably looked at that team the Carolina Panthers and said well as long as we don't hand them the win we should be able to win it so let's go out there play a safe game play conservatively take our points when we have the opportunity to take three just go ahead don't turn the ball over that's probably what the idea was but the Dallas Cowboys are a little more high quality I understand they're not playing too well to start their season however week two they got a good win over the Bengals and I know that they're down to their backup quarterback but that's more of a reason to be aggressive in my mind I think if they're playing with a backup quarterback be aggressive go try and sack him force the fumbles force him to throw an errant pass and get an interception the Giants defense should be really aggressive trying to force turnover turnovers and in turn yes Daniel Jones needs to keep the ball clean however I want to see him rip the ball deep. I want to see him make some explosive plays. I think that the Giants offense needs to do more, be more efficient in the red zone. Red zone efficiency is one of those things that we've talked about all offseason long. And for the first two weeks of the season, we talked about the Giants needing to score when they get in the red zone. Brian Dable, historically, if you look at his career with the Buffalo Bills, he, he was consistently scoring in the red zone. Pretty much, I think the number was around 60% of the time that the Buffalo Bills were in the red zone. They were turning those trips into touchdowns. Now for the Giants, through the first two weeks, haven't really seen that. Of course, the throw, the the touchdown to Daniel Bellinger, that was great. Great play call there. They got their way into the end zone. And in week one, honestly, they weren't that bad in the red zone. They were pretty solid. If I, if I remember correctly, both of their touchdowns came in the red zone. But I think that going forward, the New York Giants do need to be more efficient in the red zone. They need to be more efficient on third down. They got to keep drives alive and turn those drives into touchdowns. Field goals, they're great. I love Graham Gano. He's super reliable. And, you know, that's kind of the thing, right? He's been so great, so reliable. You count on him to make every kick. But what happens on the day where you count on him too much and his leg gets a little sore and he misses a kick, right? Then you're screwed and you lose a game over that. You got to be aggressive. You got to get your ass in the end zone. Got to score some touchdowns. That's how the New York Giants are going to beat quality teams. I know, like I said, the Dallas Cowboys, maybe not playing too well down to their backup quarterback. It's a quality team. and It has been for the past several years. They're consistently in the playoffs. So if the New York Giants want to beat quality teams, they need to score touchdowns. In week one, the Tennessee Titans, number one seed in the AFC last year, they were a quality team going into week one. The Giants actually scored touchdowns in week one, not a touchdown. They scored multiple touchdowns, which was huge for them. And that's ultimately why they won that game. But in week three against the Dallas Cowboys, especially at home on a Monday night whiteout, pumped up primetime game, get some freaking points. Go score some touchdowns here at MetLife Stadium. Get loud and rowdy. Get that place rocking with some touchdowns. Because I'm telling you, that place isn't going to get rowdy over a Graham Gano field goal. All right. They might be like, yeah, nice. Go team. But they'll get rowdy if Saquon Barkley rips a 30-yard run into the end zone or if Daniel Jones throws a back shoulder fade and Kenny Galladay hauls it in for a touchdown. That will get us all rowdy. That'll get me rowdy. I'll be jumping up and down from my TV, watching on my TV, you know, all that stuff. So again, man, I can't stress enough, the New York Giants, it was so disappointing in week one when they had that fumble on the opening kickoff, turned it into three points. That should have been seven points right there to start the game. And going forward, they need to convert opportunities like that into touchdowns. They absolutely do, my friend. They absolutely do. And God, if if we have some big touchdown plays in this game, I'm going to be going absolutely freaking nuts. I'm so excited, guys. I know you are too. We got the game coming up in a couple days here. We'll keep you updated with any relevant news that is pressing and whatnot. Make sure you guys are all caught up and uh, know everything about the team ahead of Monday night against the Dallas Cowboys, which I would just, I would give anything to beat those 
damn fucking Cowboys. I hate them so much. Do anything to beat them. And luckily, we have Tibisaurus Rex on our side. So shout out to Tibisaurus Rex for keeping us going. And the winning streak remains well and alive, my friends. But as always, make sure to like and subscribe as always below in the YouTube comments. We'd love to hear your comments um, as always and hear your opinions, narratives, perspectives. Always appreciate the love and support. Make sure to have a fantastic rest of your day. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Thank you.